Welcome back. So we've been over to Bahol, we've checked out Cebu City and the history of Magellan and the Spanish in the Philippines. Now my favourite part of this episode is we're going into the jungles to see the mahogany forests and see the world's smallest primate, the Tarsier. It's a little monkey that's about this big. Well actually a primate if we're going to be technically correct. So let's head back over to Bahol and go and see the cute little Tarsier, the world's smallest primate. Let's go everyone. <laughs> The island of Bahol is characterised by a large number of old growth forests, but in addition to that there's a number of man-made mahogany forests stretching across the island. Okay, so we've hired a van for the day and we're visiting all of the whole island. We're off to the Chocolate Hills to visit the Tarsier. Mm -hmm. I have my guide Noel here who's doing a great yeah. job, yeah. isn't that right? Yeah. Now if you follow us this way you'll notice there's one of the old growth forests here in Bahol. So a lot of the forest is actually made from mahogany trees. So there's a lot of mahogany, a lot of man-made as well, but of course some of the old growth forests here where the Tarshir inhabit, and it's one of the oldest regions. So the inhabitants, uh, the Tarshir, have to be protected. So let's go and see how we protect the Tarshir and go and see them in their natural environment. Let's go and see some Tarshir, shall we? The man-made forests usually stand out because of the uniformity and height of the big trees, the spread of their branches, the thickness and design of the leaves. Trunks, some thick and others just a few months old, grow straight upwards towards the sky, obscuring it and covering you in a great canopy of thick branches and even thicker leaves. The Tarsier is carnivorous, but primarily lives off insects. Its diet consisting of live insects, but it's also been known to feed on spiders, small crustaceans and small vertebrates such as lizards and birds. With the Tarsier, which is the world's smallest primate, there's not many of them left and they're uh, in the wild, but there's a few still here in captivity and a breeding program underway. Without doubt, they're one of the cutest animals you'll ever see in the world. And, uh, a final interesting fact about the Tarsi is that in fact they don't couple, they're solitary animals that travel independently and only meet up under each other's paths in the cover of night hunting for prey. An interesting fact about the Tarsier is that its eyes are actually fixed in its skull, meaning that it can't actually turn its eye sockets. Instead it has a special adaptation above the neck that allows its head to rotate a full 180 degrees. The eyes are disproportionately large, having the largest eye to body ratio of any mammal in the world. This is because obviously the huge eyes are for nocturnal vision and they have excellent night vision. The Tarsier is known locally as a Maumug in the local Cebuano dialect. It's an endangered species and endemic to the Philippines. It's found predominantly in the southeastern part of the archipelago, particularly in the island of Bahol, and is an endangered species. As I'm sure you'd agree with me, they are one of the world's cutest animal species, and I'm glad I'd travelled all this way just to see them. So as we headed back taking in the view, my driver Noel gave me a bit more about the history of Legaspi and his blood treaty with the locals some five to six hundred years ago. Okay, so here we are at what was called the blood signing that occurred between Legaspi and the actual indigenous people of the area. We talked about Legaspi before, we said he arrived 44 years after Magellan. Magellan of course was killed, but Legaspi decided that rather than do that, he'd sign a treaty with the natives and try to come up with some sort of settlement between them. Legaspi's use of force is still remembered by the locals today, so I thought we should move on to more pleasant topics. Behind me you can see the ocean. We have Pamilakan Island over here, which is a much smaller island. And over this way we have Pangalau Island, which was where we've been staying and we have seen some of the footage earlier today. The ocean is uh, pretty calm today. We're about to take a ferry and we're going to head back across from Tagbilaran all the way back to Cebu and see how we get on. So let's head over to the ferry port at Tagbilaran and take our ferry back across to Cebu, shall we? Meanwhile, let's enjoy the scenery while we can. As the sun set and I left the whole island, I got to thinking about how much I'd learned, but most of it seemed to be about the Spanish history of the area. Noel, my driver, suggested if I wanted to learn more about both the history of the indigenous as well as recent times, I should visit a place called Nyong, Filipinas. OK, 
Okay, so here we are on our way to Nyong, Filipinas, which uh, is going to be an interesting adventure. Just getting to Nyong, Filipino is an adventure in itself. I decided to take one of our more rustic forms of transport we talked about earlier. And as we drove out there, I realised the influence that the Americans have had in this part of the world, having a lot of air force and military history in this part of the world. But I thought, forget all that, let's go back and look at the history of what made this region great, which was the traditional peoples of the area. Let's hear their story. In Australia, of course, we have the dreamland stories of the Aboriginal people. Here in the Philippines, the original story of the traditional tribes and peoples of the Philippines goes a little something like this. Once upon a time, there was a gigantic mythical bird that came and flew across the Pacific all the way here to the Philippines. And what the bird did was it took a bamboo shoot and broke the shoot in half. The bird flew off and disappeared, never to be seen again. But out of the bamboo shoot that was broken in half were formed the first man and the first woman of the Filipinos. Manakis meaning strong and Maganda meaning beautiful. And these were the Adam and Eve creation stories like we have in our culture in Christianity. So the bamboo shoot split in half, the man and the woman created, and this is the history of the origins of people here in the Philippines. Anyway, let's continue. As I took a look around Nyong Filipinos, I was struck by all the different cultural influences. From the more Asian part of this history with its architecture and buildings through to the Spanish colonisation, saw many different styles of architecture. Compare that with the indigenous tribal huts that you see also. Apart from that, we of course had the Americanisation of the area and the forms of transport that we've seen of more recent times. This place is a melting pot of different nationalities, different backgrounds and various time histories which makes it absolutely fascinating to visit. Well that's unfortunately all we have time for on this edition of Jason's Journeys. I hope you've learned a lot about the islands of Cebu and Bahol, from the Spanish history of the area, through to the beautiful beaches on Pangalao, right through to the jungles of Bahol, and of course the cute little Tarzir, my favourite little primate. On top of that, I hope you come and get off your backside and see these parts of the world before some of these things disappear. On behalf of Jason's Journeys, this is Jason Ross Everham. Bye for now.